Hello. This is probably the right time to start doing something SDN-ish yourself. Be it some OBS CLI experiment, as in the previous video, or setting up a controller to pick its internals apart, the best way to get some hands-on experience, without a financial expense of course, is to make your lab virtual. I'm going to spend this video showing you an example of such a virtual environment, a VM in essence, that you can use almost anywhere. Unfortunately, among the multiple ways to get this VM lab, the most convenient one isn't that easy to set up in Windows. Because of that, I'm going to not only show you examples of for Windows and Unix, but also to give you a fallback method that may be not that flexible, but is extremely easy to get going. So probably the easiest way to set up your lab environment is to use a tool that has been designed for this exact purpose. It's Vagrant. Vagrant is a CLI application that allows you to create and provision a VM environment from the text config. It works with any personal VMware product and also has a number of adapters to provision a VM, say, in the Amazon cloud. First part of our lab will be this tool, so please follow the recommended steps for its installation. If you have a VMware workstation or VMware Fusion license, you can skip this step, but Vagrant needs a virtualization system to work with. And the freely available VirtualBox application is probably the best of them. Please install it too. So the text config. The config naturally has to follow special syntax. And we can find a description how to write your own configuration in the documentation of Vagrant. But lucky for us, I had an appropriate Vagrant file published online for quite some time. Let's look inside. This Vagrant file starts with a requirement of Ubuntu Trust to release for a VM operating system. This box, the so-called box, will be downloaded for our use. And then after a small set of configurations of the hardware for the VM, we have a provisionary scripts to run that are just a plain bash command line scripts to set up tools and elements for the lab environment. You can find here scripts to provision your VM with, with an OBS, the newest release, the Mininet network virtualization system, the RU controller, which is again one of the more easily hackable and supporting OpenFlow 1.3 among all them. Trima Edge controller, just for experiment's sake, it is still in a very infant stage. And all these tools will be provisioned to your VM at the moment you start its creation. The VM then can be accessed via SSH and you can perform any tasks you want and keep your VM running or suspend it for as long as you want. But at any moment you think you've broken things and that is the beauty of Vagrant. You can always destroy the VM and recreate it from the config 
a new. Let's see Vagrant in action. After the Vagrant and VirtualBox were installed, you can access the corresponding commands in the system's CLI. But to use the given config, you have to prepare its working directory and put the config inside. So I'm going to start with a very aptly named folder. If you have git installed, you can just clone the repository to your folder. But probably the easier way to copy the config would be just to copy and paste it from the repository online. Just use your favorite text editor and make sure to name it vagrant file. That is a requirement. And put the config inside. That's it. There is only one command left to start the VM creation. Vagrant up. Be advised that on the first run, Vagrant will spend some time downloading an Ubuntu box, and on any subsequent VM creation, some time will be spent installing all the required components. Thus, the recommended way to maintain your VM is to suspend it after work and resume later. Let's wait a moment to see how the provisioning starts. And now I'm going to put the recording on pause till the machine is ready. You can see these great outlines that are actually the contents of those scripts to provision the VM. So in the end, it took almost 15 minutes to complete. But to drive the point home, now you can suspend the VM execution and resume it any time later in almost an instant. Accessing a VM is also seamless, although it can be somewhat painful for Windows users due to a vagrant expecting to have a CLI SSH command, as is shown here. It uses the Linux SSH inside. To overcome that, you may want to install an MSYS Git package, which ports not only Git, but also a tiny Linux environment complete with Bash and SSH to Windows. You'll have to run Vagrant SSH from the provided Bash CLI, but otherwise it will be very much like on any other Unix. Let's see what tools we have inside. First and foremost, it is the OBS. Out of 15 minutes provisioning the VM, we spent almost 10 to build the latest packages for it. You can see that there are no switches created yet, but we have a tool to fix this. The tool is called Mininet. 
Mininet is a user space network simulation that, without any virtualization, mind you, creates a number of fake Linux interfaces between these software switches instances on your command. It has a number of inbuilt topologies and supports a lot of software switches, among which OVS, kernel and user space kinds. And also it is built in Python, so it can be easily extended with new topologies or support for new switches with a minimal Python knowledge. We will be using it to create our lab networks, the networks that will be slaved to an SDN controller of your choice. And by default in this setup, Mininet will be already using open this switch. So you don't have to specify the switch type unless it is something different. On the other hand, it has no inbuilt SDN controller in this distribution. So the only way to start the network is to say that the controller will be remote where remote can actually be any remote socket or by default implicitly a local host 6633 all the switches created will be configured to connect to this socket for an open flow controller guidance mininet gives us an extensive CLI to manage the network, but it is somewhat unwieldy to have it blocking your bash command line. You can use another terminal window to SSH to your VM again, or run another tool provided in this distribution called Tmux. As the name implies, Tmux is a terminal multiplexer. It allows you to create new windows or split these windows in two and all that inside of a single bash or SSH session. And every Tmux command starts with the same prefix by default it is control b but you can find numerous usage and configuration guides online so i won't concentrate on that let's see if we can inspect our topology switches using regular commands for the simplest possible topology oh better let's provide more complex one let's try and see if these switches are accessible there they are switch one and switch two as it has been configured All the port states are here. But it is clear that our switches are void of any flow rules. And indeed, we can't ping anything. The last part left to complement this lab is a controller. Ryu is a very good choice, but you have to provide your controller code. And that is the last thing that becomes substantially easier with Vagrant. 
Vagrant, by default, has a folder created inside of your VM that will be synchronized with the folder that Vagrant file resides in. So for the controllers that require some config, the workflow may go like this. Edit your file outside of a VM in your preferred text editor. And on every save, it is readily available inside of a VM. Let me try that with an example view controller. View simple switch.py. I'm going to just copy the raw code from GitHub. And for that, I'll be using an outside terminal. and within editor. Let's see if we will be able to manage our lab network. Do manager is a command installed in this package that will be able to run any provided controller code, assuming that it is a RU code, and will listen on your local host 6633 by default. So it becomes very easy for any virtual network, say Mininet, to hook up to the controller. We can see that now things are going and actually the full contents of switches is somewhat different. That is the recommended way of obtaining a virtual lab. But if you don't want to set up all these tools, probably it's mostly to Windows users, you can obtain a readily created VM with a good collection of tools pre-installed from the sdnhub.org site. There are Mininet, OBS, and Drew, and even more tools inside of it. So that is the promised backup plan. And that's it for this video. That should be more than enough to get you started. And thank you.